So I'm back from this specific Facebook Marketplace haul. It was some items listed for sale. Here's the three boxes shown in that ad right here. And also when I got there, he had a big, huge tote as well. We went back and forth in emails a few times. I'm not a big person to meet up on Facebook Marketplace, but around here, Facebook Marketplace has killed Craigslist. So, you know, if I want to find some items, sometimes it's the best source to find them, which again, Facebook Marketplace. Hey, it's Don. Today I've got some haul items. This is from a Craigslist post that I went out and uh, met the gentleman at his place. And I picked these up, these boxes here, which were full loaded with old records. Now this was not listed in the ad. He came back later on because I didn't want to run out there just to pick up three boxes that may be worth nothing to me. And I asked for more photos. He came up with these. I picked up some 45s at his place as well, a little box of them. Nothing spectacular in the 45s, but turns out these were from some sort of collection belonging to his family. At the end of the day, I paid 70 bucks for what fit in these boxes and list value from those, and I'm literally no exaggeration, list value from those is, and I don't know how well that's gonna show up, but it's over $3,800 and that's not even counting a chunk of what I purchased from them. This is added up line by line. What I do when I get a purchase like this is I will go through and sort out, get the current list value, list price of the items, stick a postie on the top of it, which we're gonna show you right now. So now what we have here is what was actually in those boxes and inside of that big huge tote you see. Some of the photos you can see, a few of the records, the 78s on there. There wasn't enough initially since he had a price of 30 bucks for me to say, yeah, I'm gonna drive out there an hour round trip. Again, that's why I emailed him, asked him if he had better pictures. Even if it was just the three small boxes, if it's the right type of discs, one record can be, you know, a thousand bucks or better. So I'm always very careful on, you know, looking at these, at least to make sure there's enough there. While he came up with a tote, as I said, there's another tote of records. So that was pulled out. This is the ones I've went through. Now you're seeing everything but three discs. Three discs were broken and I trashed them because they were literally broken when I got home. And that's actually pretty good for this size of a lot to not have them all dinged and bashed up like that. Now, first off, the biggest plus for me is I get all these 78 sleeves, original sleeves so I can mail records out in these. This is an easy $45 or $50 value, not included in my total of it because I'm gonna keep these and I mail out RCA records and RCA sleeves, if it's, you know, Capital, Columbia, whatever. If I have a sleeve that goes with the disc, it goes in one of these. If it doesn't go, you know, if I don't have one, I'll just use a generic one that doesn't have anything on it. If there's pencil writing, I usually just uh, erase it and mail them out in these. People appreciate having a vintage sleeve to go with the vintage 78. So I could sell these. I could probably get 50 bucks or better for these on eBay, I would imagine, because there's some fairly decent sleeves in here, including some rarer ones, some R&B labels in here, some really early uh, okay for like some of the early jazz ones. So there's some value just in these, and I always grab these. Now let's start off with the clunkers. Now this stack over here is a bunch of 45s. There are a bunch of sleeves with them, you know, picture sleeves as well, but they're nothing that I would list on their own. That is gonna be shoved in with other material that I already have and sold with lots. So I'm still gonna get some money out of that. I don't count that, that's just a freebie at the end of the day. Now the 45s will just be mixed up in lots of records I already have. I'll put the rock together, the country together, picture sleeve group together and the whole works. As I run into this stuff and, and a lot of times the sleeves just aren't worth it, record in general, so they go in lots. You can sell 125, uh, 45, you know, 10, 15, 78 at a time um, in lots and do okay that way too. Now this grouping here are 78s that I can't or wouldn't sell individually. If the disc isn't going to sell for at least 15 bucks, I don't list it. End of story. It's not worth my time to worry about shipping something at that price. So I don't list it. With these, there's some decent discs in here that I will put together with lots of other records that I have. There's Bing Crosby in here. Um, there's some Glenn Miller, Paul Whiteman, um, some Joe Reisman, uh, uh, well-known 
early performers, just not worth a lot. You know, they're, they're stuff that I'll put in with a lot. You know, it might be a five to eight dollar disc or ten dollar disc in a lot with about three or four other ones. I'll sell five or six discs for a list price of fifty-seven fifty. Hope to walk out with thirty bucks or better on that lot. And I got a bunch of those in here. Again, I don't count that as anything until it actually sells, and then it's just a lump sum at the end of the day. Now, this stack here are already uh, assigned the lots. These will be lots that are listed uh, depending on how many I, I have in each lot. Uh, Value-wise, I'm not including this in the total there either. Um, this one here, I think there's three or four. Some of them, there's five or six discs that go in a lot in this stack here. It's probably about five or $600, I would say. Take home, probably $300. So value-wise, this is one of the better lots, the better purchases I've had on 78s. So again, I spent 70 bucks on it, more than I would. It wasn't a, hey, I wanna pick the good stuff out or anything else like that. It was all or nothing. So I took a shot on it. Uh, these were in here too. Let me grab these up here too. There's some 45s. There was quite a few Elvis in the front of them. Um, I'm gonna swap out the discs on these. I've got some better condition discs, so I'll get better money for them instead of including a, a record with issues. And there was some multiples. This probably belonged to a record station at one time because there's a stack, um, I think it's in that stack of promos. They're not worth more than say 10 or 12 a piece, but there's a bunch of them, so I'll probably do something with that. But uh, this stack here, there's hundreds of dollars in value in this stack here as well. These are the ones that will all be listed individually. Again, this all is included, this part here, in the almost four grand worth of list value uh, in what I got here. Just like this, this was in there too. This is an easy one. I have the record right here in-house, probably two or three of them. They just set aside. I usually list the records in, in lots, so I'll wait till I get a bunch, and sometimes I run across a good sleeve, and I'll save this. I'll put the record in it and this will be sold on its own list price $24.50. Probably sell it for around $14, $15 bucks out of season 19 to actually $24 in season. Christmas season that is. Um, now I don't see many people rushing to grab these up uh, you know, out in the wild, but they do sell. Arthur Godfrey, um, Twas the Night Before Christmas, $34.50 list price, take home $15. So I grab up these sort of things, especially if they're holiday. You know, these do very well. I'll give you an, an easy one here. This is Bing Crosby and it's Christmas Greetings. This comes out on a 78 records uh, album which has multiple discs in it. That is worth some big money. This, again, I usually do 2X on most of these vintage records, depending on value and depending on the actual condition. This one's a very fine condition record. It looks like it was played a few times. I'm gonna list this one for 85. I should easily walk away with 40 bucks plus out of this disc. It's a 10 inch LP. So it's an LP, it's just 10 inch. And there's some other Christmas ones in here. Um, you know, so anyway, that's some of uh, uh, the oddballs that were in here, 45 wise. So breaking this all down again, it's, it's a big value in these. Now these are all individual records. You know, they're all early pre-war jazz, you know, Victor Batwing, for example. Brunswick is on this stack here. There's some early single-sided discs, one-sided discs from 1905. Uh, Value-wise, the average price across all these is about $54 list price. This is the majority, the bulk of the almost four grand in calculated value. I literally went through this entire stack and added them up on my cell phone one by one by one until I got to the end. The actual sleeves, though, are always well welcomed here because I do sell quite a few records. It's usually the standardized RCA Victor, Victor, and things like that. So these always come in handy. I've got probably five or six hundred or more of just the sleeves. I save every single one that comes through house. I've sold some when I get too many of, of like one label or whatever the case may be, or it's a rare one. Uh, some of the foreign sleeves like these, just stock RCA sleeves that may have been pressed in, say, Japan, Hong Kong, um, any of those type of areas, even some of the UK, France, and German sleeves, just these 78 sleeves can get me 15 or 20 bucks a piece. Earlier, R&B, Blues, Black Betty, um, Gotham is another one of those labels if you find the sleeve for an early Gotham for like an R&B classic. You know, people might spend 30 or 40 bucks to have one, just the paper sleeve. 
So we've pulled thousands of those sleeves off, sold them and done a ton with those. In some cases, I've made more off of the vintage rare mint condition sleeves than I did off the records. So there's some value there. Again, just like this stack here, every one of these is an individually priced, looked it up myself, one by one, just to make sure that they're accurate. Now, in this case, some of them, I've got two copies in just immaculate condition. Now, these would be in probably about an E minus to E condition, maybe even a little more. This one almost looks like it's an E condition, which is extremely good. That's using VJM's grading scale, not gold mine. I do not use gold mine ever on 78 records. I always use the VJM, Vintage Jazz Mark. And that's what that stands for. The pricing or the grading scale has been around for maybe 70 years. It's been around for a very, very, very long time. And that's what I use. If you're gonna sell to collectors who collect this type of stuff, you need to grade it like the collectors wanna see it graded. They're gonna be looking for the BJM. You're grading it okay, great, fine, very fine or something. That's not gonna mean anything to the record collectors. And the other thing I should say too, if you're not willing to box these up correctly, don't sell them because you're just going to get yourself in some trouble with, with these sorts of things. If you're not willing to invest the time into grading them properly, understanding the grading systems, you know, don't do this either. But value-wise, this is pretty much easy money. If we list this stack in a day or so, probably split it up into two different sections so we don't flood the market all at once. They're all the same type of record, and I don't want to have it where there's not enough value there because the market's already bought some records. So that's usually what I do too. I usually split them up. It keeps people coming back for a longer time instead of just listing them one day, everybody sees them, picks the good ones and you never see them again. List them over a length of time. By the time the second week comes along of me listing, I can do a third week here, split up some more a fourth week. Plus I have records from other purchases, which I've shown in some of my Patreon and um, YouTube membership videos. As well too, we're gonna to probably look at close-ups on these for Patreon and YouTube membership. And I'll show you, you'll be able to read the condition. Maybe I'll even list them and then we'll do the video after that. But uh, if you're in my Patreon or YouTube membership, as we've been doing, we're gonna go in depth on stuff like this. We're gonna break it down. I'm gonna show you looking up on some of the picture sleeves. I'll show you how to use Discogs to cut down your research time by a 10th easily right off the bat too in one of the next coming up videos too. I've had a lot of questions on on um, records, so anyway. This will give me in the $4,000 range worth of listed merchandise in my store. Because of purchases like this, right this second we're sitting on $1.6 million worth of inventory just in the store that I share with everybody, just my one main eBay store. So, you know, the money's there, the value's there, Reselling still works if you know what you're doing, if you can find the right items. Most categories in vintage and collectibles, you know, have been getting flooded to some extent. So I've been branching out. You know, we do extremely well in many different categories. Paper is one of my favorites, but I do like vintage 78s because most people don't mess with them. I can get big stacks of them where there's some value there and go from there. Now, one thing, just because you see a bunch of 78s, don't expect to get this good of a deal on any purchase like that. This is not the usual for getting this many individually priced 78s that are early pre-war jazz than any other pick. Usually the other picks, you'll get a handful, a couple, 40, 50 out of thousands possibly of records. 95% of every record I usually run into isn't worth me buying. And in most cases, I would never have just bought the whole lot. I'd just try to get the few records I want. And if I couldn't get them, I would walk away because it wouldn't be worth messing with the other records. But there was a good chunk of early nice records in this lot beyond any of the other lots that I usually get. And again, I usually don't just buy them if it's, you know, take it or leave it because it's usually not worth it. I try to always pick. The other day, I've got a video on this too from another haul. We picked through thousand, two, three thousand records, and I got a stack of maybe a hundred or so. I filled up a shopping cart was basically the gist of it. So don't expect to always be like this, but if, if you know what you're doing, you, you know the records enough to, to be dangerous. And the biggest factor too on stuff like this, when you're out in the wild, you can't use your phone to look these up. How could I ever look these up on my phone that quick to not be in a place for the whole day? You have to know at least some or label-wise or information without your phone. 
When we started, you couldn't use a phone in public. Phones weren't a thing to use. I don't even remember if I had phones, you know, when they first came out, even at that point. You, you have to have the knowledge in your head. Don't always rely on a phone. A lot of places we go where I pick stuff like this is in a big building and sometimes there is no, well, many times I would probably say, over half the time when I'm out in a, a sourcing venue looking for these types of old records and stuff, it's in a place where there is no phone reception, no Wi-Fi or nothing else. I also would never recommend just buying thousands of records, like I said, and just hoping for the best on something like that, even if it's $100, $200, because if you can't sort them down quickly, you're gonna end up having to look up two or 3,000 records uh, to figure out which ones are valuable, and that alone will kill the value of the purchase because you have wasted so much time, and you still have to photo them, you still have to list them, on top of that and once you sell them you've got more time into shipping them packing them up correctly it could take four minutes or so to ship a record correctly if you've done it enough even less time than that if you set yourself up right you know with the the wrapping dispenser and the same size boxes and all that kind of stuff but anyway a great score from Facebook marketplace as I said earlier Craigslist around here doesn't exist it does but it's not worth my time or pretty much anybody's time well anyway that'll do it for today hopefully that gave you some ideas some thoughts if you did please hit that like button down below you can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live subscribe and tell all your friends Set lets you And with the Deluxe Domino Rally Set you can actually Domino Rally! Basic, Intermediate or Deluxe! Or you can get several sets and go! Each set sold separately